Well, shooters and reloaders and three circles passengers and members, it's Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. And sure enough, we want to take a break from doing that yard work out there. I'm covered with pollen and the allergies are acting up even though I got meds and all that kind of thing. But this video is, is really for Joshua Huffman. Because what Joshua wants to know is that we're, we're doing these heavy bullet loads with a 45 ACP, we're working with 10 millimeter, and Joshua Huffman wants to know for bullet selection on some of these to stay safe nearing maximum pressures to try and get performance, he wants to know what do we need to think about when it turns to bullet selection. So let's do that in this video. So what kicked this off for Joshua is that, for instance, in the very popular Lee reloading manual, a lot of times they'll go with what they call a 230 grain lead bullet, for instance, for the 45 ACP. But they don't really go into what kind of lead bullet. Can we use a round nose? Can we use a semi-wad cutter? Uh, a truncated cone? And it's all good. Is that true? And, and the reason why it's confusing is other reloading manuals, like the Lyman, get very specific about bullets. They show the exact bullet or the exact cast bullet. As you see here, the 40 caliber number 401654 Lyman, they give an exact bullet for you to use the data. So does that mean we can use any 150 grain bullet that's cast? Or do you have to use just this bullet for this load data? To make it even more confusing, look at this drawing of the 401654. And then you go to the next one, which is the 175 grain 401638. Not 654, but 638 bullet. But it's the same drawing. See the one grease groove and the length of the driving band? It's the same bullet. One grease groove, the same driving band, the same truncated cone. It's the exact same bullet. How can that be when this one weighs 175 grains? So there's all kinds of confusion out there. Well, let's look at the considerations for bullet selection in terms of safety and pressure. So what we've got here are the safety and effects of bullet properties on pressure. Because it's all about pressure. Pressure is what works in our favor, but it's also inherently into the idea of safety. The following is generally but not universally true. Because there are exceptions that we can find. But overall, if you increase any of these following, you will usually get increase in pressure. So number one, when you look at load data for a, a certain bullet weight, that means you need to stay with that because if you increase the bullet weight, from the data, you'll get increased in pressure. So if you're going to go ahead and use data for a different bullet, you can only apply that data if, number one, you got the same bullet weight. For example, it's more or less common sense, but if you got load data for the 340 grain 4570 bullet on the left, you cannot apply that load data to a 500 grain bullet like the one on the right. The pressure is going to shoot up astronomically. Now number two would be bullet size. 
For example, if you have a jacketed bullet, say for the 45 ACP, that's 0.451 inch in diameter, and then you have another one that's, uh, say, the same weight from a different manufacturer, but it's at 0.452 inches, and you verify that there is a difference there by measuring the bullets. Well, if you use the load data for the 451 bullet, and you substitute the 452 jacketed bullet, you're going to have an increase in pressure because your bullet's a little bigger, it's going to have a little more resistance, and the pressure will go up. Now, it may not be a lot, but then again, if you're maximum or close to maximum, it could make a difference. Now, number three is bullet seating depth. And of course, what this means, that if you seat the same bullet deeper into the case, then what you're doing is you're reducing the case capacity of the powder space in that case, and the pressure will go up. So increasing the seating depth, or rather making the seating depth greater, resulting in a shorter overall length of your cartridge will increase the pressure from a load that has the seating depth that is farther out of the case. Now this is important because the seating depth is either something we create statically or can be changed if you have a situation where you drop a bullet and it lands and actually seats itself deeper because you don't have enough neck tension or during the cycling of a semi-automatic pistol you could get the bullet driven farther into the case thereby increasing the seating depth or rather driving the bullet deeper into the case making the round shorter that will increase pressure. So we need to make sure our bullet seating depth is not just where we set it, but also it stays there until that round is fired. Now number four here is bullet hardness. And this is a actually very comprehensive subject because what you have is a situation where if you have a jacketed bullet, that will be harder than a cast bullet, and you will generally get an increase in pressure, but that's not always true. Because even the jackets vary in the hardness that they have, depending on the alloy of the jacket material itself, but also it in it involves what's underneath the jacket. If the core is harder, then the overall hardness effect on pressure will be increasing. If you have a harder overall effect from, say, a steel core bullet, you could have a copper jacket on a steel core bullet, but that will actually have more effective hardness upon the pressure than if you have a softer core. More hardness will give you more pressure. And that applies to cast bullets also. If you have a BHN-10 target bullet as opposed to a BHN-18 or a BHN-22 hard cast bullet for hunting, you're going to have more pressure with a harder cast bullet than a softer cast bullet. So you'll notice here we have a GI Hardball Winchester round and one of our cast 230 grain bullet rounds and the bullet weight's the same but with equal powder charges you're going to have higher pressure with the harder full metal jacket bullet than with the softer lead round nose bullet. 
higher pressure here, harder bullet. But those of you out there might be sharp to notice that the seating depth of the lead bullet is deeper than the full metal jacket. So that the deeper seating depth will raise pressure of this round. Now our very popular plated bullets though, the jackets are so thin that for all intents and purposes, this 200 grain semi wide cutter and this 200 grain semi wide cutter will have equal pressure with equal powder charges. Basically, the nice thing about plated bullets is we can use lead bullet data or jacketed bullet data for the plated bullets. Now the last consideration we have here for safety and effects of bullet properties on pressure is that the bullet bearing surface. Generally speaking, the more bullet bearing surface a bullet has, the higher pressures that load will have. Now the bearing surface is defined as the contour of the bullet that effectively engages the barrel of the gun where the bullet's being fired. And the more bearing surface a bullet has that's equal in other respects to another bullet, the more bearing surface, the higher the pressure of the load. If you look closely, these two bullets, which are equal weight, the round nose bullet actually has more bearing surface than the Keith bullet that you see here. And the reason why is you have three driving bands which equal the bearing surface of the Keith bullet, but also there's a little section above the crimping groove that has bearing also on the round nose. And this has more bearing surface because of that than the Keith bullet. So this one will give a little more pressure, all things else being equal. Now also notice we're talking about effective bearing surface because you'll notice that the deep grease groove on the Keith bullet that even as this bullet obturates in the barrel of the gun, it will not increase the bearing surface. Whereas these tiny shallow grease grooves here may very well be obliterated in the passage through the barrel, thus effectively increasing the bearing surface as this bullet travels on the barrel. So effective bearing surface this one also has more bearing surface because of that reason. So again, pressures will rise a little more with this one. So Joshua Huffman, there you go. Safety and effects of bullet properties on pressure that we have to apply whenever we're going to use a different bullet than another bullet. And once again, for all of you out there, if you have anything that you might be able to add as, for instance, another bullet point or some other issue that you see would come to be beneficial in the discussion here, please post in the comment section. And otherwise, uh, it's been kind of fun. This is uh, more of a classroom video, but there you go. Good shooting and safe shooting all of you out there. Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. See you in the next video. Bye for now.